who um, had a special interest in tribes and Indian people, and indeed spent some time at the Bay Mills Indian community, and is a kind of a notorious figure because he was described by, by many as coming to Bay Mills and uh, walking around the reservation, meeting with the, the elders and tribal leaders, and, and uh, passing out shiny new pennies to Indian children. And th this is the story. I never witnessed this, but this is the story that I've heard. Um, so he was concerned. Uh, he understood what was happening uh, to treaty fishermen who were, who were fishing and exercising their rights. They were being arrested by the Department of Natural Resources, and he brought the United States versus Michigan uh, in 1973. After having brought the lawsuit, however, I must confess with all due respect to, to John Milanowski, I'm not sure he really knew what to do with the lawsuit at that point. He kind of filed it and then he sort of kind of crossed his fingers and hoped things would go okay. And um, a few years later, when the case had been sitting fairly quietly uh, for the first two years, um, I got involved in the case along with some incredibly wonderful attorneys who were uh, worked with me. We had a great team effort. One of them is a man named Dan Green. Uh, Catherine Tierney was also co-counsel. Jim Janetta was co-counsel. Uh, we had a, a, a terrific attorney from the uh, field solicitor's office in Minneapolis named Elmer Nitschke, who represented the Interior Department and was very instrumental in the success of, of the litigation. And then we were fortunate enough to have some amazing expert witnesses, probably the most prominent of which was, was Charles Cleland, but also Helen Hornbeck Tanner, a very fine uh, uh, historian and anthropologist. So here we were in 73, there really was one other major precedent uh, going on about at the same time that, that preceded us slightly, and that was in U.S. v. Washington. We had a U.S. attorney who had obviously was interested in the case enough to file it, uh, but then kind of turned it over to us. And as a result, we had a great deal of, of uh, influence over the course of the litigation. We were also fortunate to have a, a, an amazing judge, a, a fellow named uh, Noel P. Fox. Judge Fox has passed away, uh, gosh, probably 20, maybe more, at least 20 or 25 years ago. He was very sympathetic to the case, to the decision. It's a, it, it, I was rereading it a little bit. I must say it's a, it's a bit daunting. It's in the federal supplement. It's uh, about 75 pages long. Uh, it, it reads like a history lesson. And I think Judge Fox had a, I, I wouldn't say an agenda, but he certainly had a, a, a sympathetic eye and ear towards uh, what we were trying to do. And he wrote a very impassioned decision. Um, and he saw this as, I'm not sure what, but if you read the opinion especially, you will see the fervor uh, that he had and um, the concern about dignities to say the least, that had been committed upon Native American people. And it was almost as if he was determined to correct that in, in his own way. So we were very fortunate in that regard. We managed not only to establish the existence of the right throughout the Michigan waters of the Great Lakes, generally, probably three quarters of Lake Michigan, about half of Lake Superior, and about a quarter to a third of Lake Huron. But we also were able to convince the owner entity that really ought to be regulating the exercise of the right uh, were the tribes themselves. And that was, the more I look back on that, some 35 years ago or whatever, and, and the more I look at the kind of infrastructure that we had to be able to carry out the regulation, which was almost zero, <laughs> it, it was an astonishing result, especially in Michigan, which was a, a very aggressive towards the treaty right and towards the regulation of the resource. We have obviously built up uh, biological and law enforcement capacity since the decision. It's still not as magnificent as Glyphwick and as extensive as Glyphwick, but it does exist and, and it does assist the tribes in regulating the resource.